All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming back. You know, as I work with so many customers throughout the year, one of the things that I hear consistently is more and more sales leaders want to take advantage of coaching to drive increased performance. Uh, one of our partners, CSO Insights, has done some amazing research in this area. You know, they're seeing that basically companies that embed coaching into the sales process as a part of actually how they sell each and every day see 21% increases in the close rates for their deals. And there's so many other phenomenal kind of results you can see as well. And so today that's what we're going to do. We are very fortunate to have with us today Cloud Coaching International to share with us what is happening and what they're doing to truly transform coaching in the sales experience of so many companies out there today. And so I'd like to first introduce Walter Rogers, CEO and co-founder of Cloud Coaching International. Walter's created and led businesses across 13 different countries, three continents. Please join me in welcoming Walter. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Thank you for joining us. And then also, I'm very, very proud to be able to introduce Tony Robbins. 35 years, has had a unique opportunity to work with 4 million people to transform the way they operate. He's one of the top 50 business intellectuals in the world. And we are very fortunate to have him with us here today. Please join me in welcoming Tony Robbins. Thank you. How are you doing? Thanks, Tony. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thank you. So... You guys are on some amazing stuff. And you know, you have this joint venture, Cloud Coaching International, that focuses on sales performance, transformational coaching in the cloud. Um, I mean, Tony, can you just share with us, I mean, how did you guys come together to even form cloud coaching? Well, Mark uh, Benioff has been a dear friend of mine for about 25 years. I've been on this journey with him since the very beginning. I can remember him coming to one of my events and saying, I've been pushed over the event's edge. I'm going to leave Oracle, and I'm going to start this company called Salesforce. It's going to change the world. I'm going to build a $100 million company. <laughs> At $5 billion this year, that's quite a change. And uh, along the years, as I saw the technology getting better and better, I saw, also saw the virtualization of sales staffs and began again to see that, my gosh, the tools are now here to really bring that together, but we're missing some of the psychology and emotion. A tool is only as good technology as getting people to engage in it. And so I started talking with Mark about what those possibilities were, and I'd, we'd known each other, Walter and I, for about 15 years. And so I said, what if we brought our tools together, figured out how to really model the very best practices that exist to maximize profitability? Because everybody in this room knows that the biggest challenge right now, I'm sure all of us know, the economy we're in right now is teetering a bit. China is in a very unique position, and right now with the Fed is still making us feel very good, but we're in the most competitive market we're ever going to be in, and it's going to get more competitive going forward when the economy tightens. Big companies are going to have to produce, and if you look at it, back in 2008, all these large corporations, enterprises, got incredibly good at cutting, at becoming more efficient, and their balances, you know, their revenue side has done well, but it's really the cost side that made most of that happen. When things tighten, the focus has got to be on revenue again, and it's not going to be technology alone that's going to drive it. It's going to be everybody in this room maximizing resources, and that's really what we're built to do. That's great. That's great. The, Walter, I mean, when you guys came together on this, I mean, you know, you've got a lot of experience in this area. I mean, and, and I, I agree. I mean, you know, it, it can't just be about technology. I mean, what was your, you know, kind of influence on this? Well, you know, it was a kind of a magical moment when we realized that when you actually do uh, combine psychology with process, with technology, and really focus on enabling individuals, yeah. that you can create amazing change, a positive change. And uh, most organizations have typically been focused on either just the process or this just the technology, but really ignoring the human side of it. Yeah. And that's where Tony and I coming together has made just a huge difference in our clients. That's great. Yeah. Now, the, the, now, let me move on here. So. What are the sales transformations, and for that matter, the CRM enablement challenges and opportunities that you see globally? I mean, can you, can you, you, know, you share with this with sales leaders and sales professionals with all of us here today? Yeah. I mean, how can the people in this room, how can we maximize what our team and our company's sales performance can actually be? Yeah, well, the good news is that people are choosing Salesforce.com as uh, the beginning of their transformation journey. And um, one of the things that we're seeing in so many global deployments is that there's a really heavy focus on moving data from one system to another, right? Going off of Siebel yeah. and onto Salesforce. And that's really important. And the plumbing that happens on the back end, you know, has to happen. But at the end of the day, you can put a new process and a new technology in front of an organization. If they don't actually get why it matters to them, how it's going to change their life, how they're going to be able to impact their own performance, their people's performance, they're not going to change. Why should they change? And so change management, I think, is becoming one of the most critical and important 
functions that need to be tackled in these deployments, especially the global ones. And I will tell you that in a lot of cases where companies struggle with adoption or can't figure out why um, the end users are really focused on you know, maximizing this great technology and process that's been put in front of them, I lay that problem at the feet of the C-suite. Because if they're not using the platform, why should their employees use it? You know, there's been a lot of examples where we've actually seen executives require reporting information in spreadsheets. It comes from the finance department. And sales managers or sales directors are now having to go through what are called accounting gymnastics to extract information from Salesforce, dump it into a spreadsheet, reformat the spreadsheet so that their manager now can look at it in a format in which they want to see it. Well, that defeats the whole point of having the information in the cloud ready for access to you at any time. It's ridiculous. So our focus, honestly, while the end users are super important, and you've got to you know, obviously give them the tools that they need. We're focused on enabling middle managers and executives with the skills that they need to make change happen. That's good. That's good. Now, research has shown that you don't always need to transform your sales organization. You know, and, and you know, there's you know, you know, research from CSO Insights that kind of suggests, I think, Tony, you even said this. I mean, you don't need to rebuild your entire swing. You simply need to square up the head Two millimeters. I mean, I love this. I mean, can you can you share us? I mean, what do you what do you mean by that? Well, everybody here knows that uh, whenever you're working with a team of people, all of us in this room, when you have large forecasts, new goals, whatever you're going to do, there's a process that goes on psychologically in all the people that we lead and manage. And that process is even within ourselves. You come up with a goal or desire, it comes in your conscious mind, and then one of two things happen: either you go, "This is done," and you have that sense of certainty, and you find a way, or your brain goes, "Bullshit," <laughs> right? And, but you're not allowed to say bullshit, right? You're supposed to nod your head, we're going to go rock and roll this. And unless you can get from that level of certainty inside of you, you're not going to transfer it to anybody else. And the two millimeters I'm talking about is I've found in the companies that I've been able to turn around, and I've had the chance to work with large enterprises and also small businesses, the common denominator is getting people to believe. You watch an athlete, and you know when they go out on that field as a kicker, you can look at them, you may not even know football, you know they're going to miss that field goal. Or you can see that person going for that foul shot, you know, because that level of certainty is everything. So what helps people increase certainty is when we can start showing them how to make huge changes by making tiny changes. Making a series of small changes that together create geometric change. Optimization, not something new. But what I found is sometimes knowing which two millimeters to do is a difference. And the metaphor I use is uh, I coach people and I uh, have the privilege of working with some really unique individuals. And they have um, privilege of get seven figures to be coached. And I'll say that to impress you. I say it because it really impresses me. <laughs> um, but when they coach them, I work with people that are the best on earth. And the best on earth always have this two millimeters. And I'll tell you, I first came across it two ways. One was I swore I'd never play golf. And I have four children, and three of them are boys, and two of them started playing golf. And I thought, oh my God, I don't want to dress like that. I don't want to do that. I don't have that kind of time. But I decided to go out and play golf. So I get out on the course for the first time, and I'm committed. And I outdrive my instructor in the first day. And I'm a guy, so I am breaking every part of his body verbally that I possibly can break. I'm telling his friends I've outdrove him. And uh, not realizing that paybacks are a total bitch. And um, so sure enough, the next day I'm out, I'm actually on a course, not a driving range, which anybody play golf in this room? A few of you. And uh, it's a little different. And then meanwhile, he's adjusting me and telling me what to do. And there are people waiting. And I'm getting more tension in my body. And I swing and just shank this thing 150 yards off the wrong direction, and I'm totally frustrated. And I give me another ball, and now I go the opposite. I overcorrect, and I'm getting more and more pissed off. And he's saying, "Ain't it a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to golf." <laughs> and I'm saying, "This is not golf. This is me. I was playing incredibly well yesterday, my first day, right?" And he's laughing, and I'm getting more and more frustrated. Give me another one. Give me another one. And finally, I said, I am 150 yards off. And he said to me, no, you're two millimeters off. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, Tony, first of all, I messed with your swing just a bit just to keep you humble. It's like, I'm going to kill this guy. <laughs> he said, but second of all, he said, you know, your swing isn't really that bad. It's just, you know, if you hit the ball and you're just two millimeters this direction with your force, you're hitting it way over here. If it's just two millimeters that direction, you're over there. You just got to hit it exactly like a nail in the head. And I was like, okay, boom. One time I'm there. You go from what seems impossible to being where you want when you don't overcorrect, when you correct the right thing at the small levels. 
And I think right now we tend to throw our pendulums. We do this in our intimate relationships. This is horrible, so we go for the other extreme. We do it in our sales. This isn't working, let's try the newest thing. What you really have to figure out is what is the difference that makes the difference? What are the little things that make that difference? And when you find those are, what you find those is find people that are the very best, that are performing at the highest level. And then you find that little change will make it. I, I, I did this, I'll give you one last example. Hopefully it'll make it square in your mind, how it got square in mind. I'm like, okay, golf. But then I'm coaching this man who is the greatest facial surgeon in the world. And he's a gentleman who the Sultan of Brunei flew him there to do two of his family members' faces for $2 million. And if you were anybody in Hollywood in those days, and you could afford it, this person make it happen. And I go for my coaching session with him, and he's late. And finally, I'm waiting a little bit, and the nurse comes out and says, you know, Tony, uh, Dr. Hoffman said, why don't you, he's really sorry he's late, why don't you come in and watch? And I'm like, wow, I'm in. So I scrub up, put everything on, go in, and then he's playing this rock and roll music. He's a total genius. He's like, Tony, how's it going? He goes, watch this, and he cuts his face and lifts her face off. And I had a, you know, a little change in state. <laughs> like, I couldn't even believe it. And so I, I stayed as long as I could to save face. And then I was like, you know, I have some calls I need to make. And he said, well, you can use my office. So long story short, I go to his office, and so I'm telling you the story. On his office is, he's at that stage getting older. And as human beings get older, they tend to be less focused on themselves and more focused a little bit on giving and legacy. And so now he wants to share what he's learned. And he's a genius. He knows the difference between, literally, as you read this book, he has 150 pictures of the most beautiful women in the world the last 20 years, across culturally. 150 pictures of the most attractive men. And he's analyzed it to see there are only seven changes he makes in any woman's face, or man, and this is what he wrote. Never do I make a change more than two millimeters. And I see this picture of a woman who's 84 years old, and he made her look like early 50s and beautiful, and never more than two millimeters. Now, for example, on a woman, men don't know this, but, and most women don't, but the measurement below your nose, the top of your lip, that measurement, if it's the same as the pupil of your eye or slightly smaller, men don't even know why, but they're attracted to your face continuously. If it's exactly the same, slightly bigger than two millimeters, you have an average face. If it's significantly larger than two millimeters, you have what he calls butt-ass ugly face. That was his technical term. <laughs> but this point is he makes two millimeter changes and it's a transformation. So I live for those two millimeters. And what happens is people believe they can make a two millimeter change because they can't. It's, it's doing the right thing at the right time. Sequence matters, as we all know in this room. And yet, buy a house. Is it the right thing to do? Sure. 2007, wrong frickin' time in most places in the country. So a big part of what we do is model that and show you. You don't have to try and change your whole organization. Let's just make these little nits, which everybody sees are real. Everybody can, their head goes, yes, that can be done, and boom, numbers change. Um, Mike Clayville is an example. He's now at Amazon, but at VMware, he took what we applied. We took this nine-step process with him. He took from 500 million to 2 billion in eight straight quarters. And then Amazon just stole him away. He's doing quite well there as well. So it's a process that's actually quite simple. And that's, that, you know, Walter, this two millimeter concept, I mean, yeah. you know, in the businesses you've worked with, I mean, where have you seen this applied, like, you know, that two millimeter notion? Um, there, uh, there's obviously a lot of focus on pipeline and forecast in almost every single company. Okay. And in most cases, it's sad to say, you know, only 47% of deals that are forecast to close actually close. Now that's not 47% of your pipeline. This is 47% of a deal that somebody says is going to close and is committing it. It's sad. So what is the two millimeter shift that can help improve the performance of the forecast? And then how can you ensure that you've got sufficient pipeline in future quarters so that you're not struggling with those quarters when they show up? Yeah. And it is a simple, simple, simple two millimeter shift. It literally is. And in most organizations, the forecast and the pipeline is discussed in the same meeting. So what happens is the pipeline is never discussed, right. only the forecast is discussed because of the pressure of the quarter. Yep. Two millimeter shift says this, yep. don't have that conversation in the same meeting, have two yep. separate meetings. Literally, one on forecast, one on pipeline. And have effective one-on-one -on -one conversations and effective team conversations, because those yeah. two are also different. And we outline all of this in our book, Pathways to Growth, which is really about a sales management system. Yeah. Now, here's what that little two-millimeter shift can do for you. We just did two projects, and I just took a look at the results from the case studies. So one was T-Mobile, you know, large telco, and another one was Du Bois Chemical, which is an industrial chemicals company. Okay. T-Mobile, fast-growing business. The enterprise business is very well there, but there's a leader who is inspired in that group who isn't satisfied with even exceptional results. 
He always wants to improve. So he brought us in and had us implement our sales management system at T-Mobile. And the results were quite dramatic. His problem was he wanted to increase the pipeline in out quarters, and he wanted to increase his deal size. So by implementing these little shifts, he created 37% more opportunities in out quarters and 43% greater deal size. Wow. Two millimeter shift was not that difficult to do. Okay? Wow. The boy chemical, totally different situation. It was a turnaround. Uh, president got brought in by private equity to change their trajectory because they were going down. Implemented the sales management system, same little two millimeter shifts. In uh, the last quarter, that 185% more viable opportunities in that quarter and a 51% uh, anticipated revenue growth based on orders, volumes of orders of chemicals. So these are, you know, those results are fantastic. And people think, wow, I've got to rip my organization apart and rebuild everything. Yeah. It's actually not true. It's an incremental approach to change. And you find these small little shifts that can make the differences like what I just described. That's tremendous. That's and, tremendous. and I think the yeah. point is, people usually intersect with our lives, with our business, and me personally, at two extremes. They're the best in the world at what they do, the marks, people of that nature that are always looking for the edge. That's what makes somebody high performance, what makes them result is they're, they're, they never lose that hunger. They're looking for that edge. The other people come to us are people that are screwed. <laughs> Yeah. People that are in trouble and they know they're in trouble, they got to do it. The people that are in the lukewarm middle, none of you would be those type of people. You wouldn't have taken your time to be in a room like this, much less a week like this. But that's really, we're those two extremes. If you're that middle stuff, we're not going to be doing business with you. Wow. Now, I think it was, what, two years ago here at Dreamforce, you know, you launched, you know, this very successful, it's been groundbreaking, this book, Pathways to Growth. Yeah. Um, Walter, can, I mean, can you share some of the best practices, perspectives on how companies, are you saying that there's like nine principles in there to transform and accelerate just their tempo of how they basically run their pipeline to purchase cycle? Yeah, so two of the examples I just gave with uh, T-Mobile and Du Bois, the, the essence of the book is that we've identified there's nine core disciplines that organizations use to create substantial results. And it's not rocket science. We've talked about it, right? It's, you know, how do you run a pipeline meeting? How do you run a forecast meeting? How do you prepare a seller before going into a sales call? What's your role while you're in the sales call? And how do you debrief after the sales call? It's those types of disciplines. And what we're finding is that as we enable our clients with these disciplines, they're able to get better visibility into their pipeline, better hygiene into their pipeline, forecast accuracy goes up, and they just produce better results. We did a control group inside Dell, one of our clients, which, by the way, this, this sales management system is a fundamental core to their turnaround strategy. And by implementing these techniques, they had 10 teams use our process and 10 teams not. Okay? The 10 teams that did produced 19% more wins, 125% more pipeline, and 26% fewer losses. And it's all about applying some science to sales management. There's been a lot of science applied to sales process, yeah. very little to sales management. The move to yeah. technology has made us kind of rely more and more on the system. And the yeah. beauty is the systems have gotten better and better. But it's made us a bit weaker on the actual psychology that yeah. actually executes it. And we all know knowledge you know, is not power. Knowledge is potential power. Knowledge is trumped by execution every day of the week. So this is a process for making sure that execution happens by also understanding more about the individuals you're dealing with as well and having it be prompted to you within the system. Yeah. So you're not trying to maintain all this in your head. It happens in the system. You know what to do. You know how to deal with people to really help maximize their capacities. That's great. Now, now Walter, I mean, so it's been a couple of years now. You guys have launched this thing. It's been phenomenal. It had a tremendous impact on so many clients. Yeah. What's next? What's next for Cloud Coaching? Oh, you know, we've got a very exciting future. So first of all, on the pathways to growth, we're actually implementing um, technology in a system so that our customers can self-consume the product and not rely on us to implement it. So we're totally making them completely self-enabled. Ingersoll Rand was the first customer that purchased it as a standalone product. So we're really excited about the packaging around that. Um, one of the things that all of us struggle with every single day is consuming information. I did some research on this the other day, and on average, your typical person in this room is going to consume 34 gig of information every day. That's 100,000 100, what? 100,000 pages? 100,000 words. words. That's right. 100, so words. to put it in context, War and Peace is 400,000 words. <laughs> and that's what we do daily today. Every day. Between email, radio, TV, satellite, iPod, whatever. Excellent. It's huge. So, um, so we're, we're, our mission is to break through that. And we're going to announce a product today and I'm going to bring on stage Jim Cassetta. He's the guy in the magazine right here in the middle. And uh, he's going to showcase a new product called MessageNow, which is going to help 
all of you cut through this noise and communicate directly in salesforce.com using the power of video. Jim? Hi, everybody. Wow. <laughs> so Knowledge Now is a, is a patented communication platform that we built and launched last year at Dreamforce. Uh, it was initially created focused on end user training, but once it got out there, the customers started utilizing it and seeing the opportunity to use this across their entire organization. Today we'd like to demonstrate one of our newer features, a product called MessageNow, and we're going to show how that works with KnowledgeNow. Can but, I just mention something I just wanted yeah. to do, because if you're not familiar with KnowledgeNow, the biggest challenge you have is adapting technology, right? So how do you do it? You either let people fend for themselves, try to figure it out, or perhaps you have webinars, because most of your people are, are virtualized all over the world, and you do this training session, and everybody nods their head, and they figure out where everything is, even Salesforce, just coming into Salesforce initially. And most of it is intuitive, but they don't know how to maximize. And the whole reason you bought the technology was to maximize. So what happens after a week or two of that three-hour, you know, three one-hour webinar? They don't remember 90% of it. So what we came together and said is, what if we took, instead of any separate locations when you're learning, let people learn in real time, and let's embed it on the platform. So Knowledge Now is embedded into Salesforce. So anytime somebody's trying to figure out what to do, boom, on comes a cloud coach. That's what cloud coaching is. Instantly, it shares them in a few seconds what this is, how to use it, rock and roll. And so now people can continue to learn. They can be reinforced. They can do it at their own tempo. And you don't have these ridiculous classes that are truly, they're not a waste of time, but they have very little lasting impact. So this is an additional tool that allows you now to do things more instantaneously. Certain things we've already built for you, things we can customize for you. But then on the run, you're going to want to be able to interact and have an impact if you're a leader in your organization, to acknowledge people, to have an impact, to announce something. That's what this tool is for. And from a personalization standpoint, it's designed so based on your user role, your profile, your custom fields, the information appears in the sidebar menu uh, for you. Um, so it's not just general information for everybody. And as you see on the screen here, we've got two different sections, one for Knowledge Now, and, and this is pre-recorded Cloud Coach messages that are available for you to click on. Uh, then we also have Message Now below. So let's first show you uh, an example of Knowledge Now, and um, this is part of our onboarding that uh, you know, our customers use with new customers. And let's say one of the pros take it from here. Welcome to Salesforce.com, the ultimate customer relationship management system. Our Knowledge Now coaches are here to guide you through the basic training concepts and methodology. You'll see on the cloud coaches, we also have a menu system built in. Amy, if you click on that menu. This allows our customers the ability to customize the cloud coaches. So we can actually record these messages or the customers can create them and then they can populate the actual cloud coach with internal content. If they have training in their LMS system or documents they want to push out, they can do it right through this cloud coach. And what happened when we rolled this out, and you can click on the X right there, um, the main focus initially was the end user training. But as you can see, the list of different items here, it's evolved. A lot of our customers are using it for human resource enrollment information, um, as well as sales tips and sales nuggets that are available real time in the workflow. So upon rolling this out, we started thinking, you know, how can we produce even greater value for our customer? How can we build, you know, you know, some, you know, some true fans, you know, you know, fans that'll be there forever, uh, raving fans. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we would create a tool or a process to help people create videos on the fly. So in the past, people would go in their studios, they can create their content and publish it through our system. But our customers are like, you know, we want to be able to share a win with everybody immediately, or a select group of individuals. And that's when we built Message Now. So I'm going to go ahead and demo that. You'll see on my, uh, on my phone here, I'm going to click on an app, Message Now. And when I log in, it's going to recognize the different groups that I'm associated with that can publish messages to. So we're going to create the uh, development team. And you'll see I've got two messages already recorded that I can view. Um, let's go ahead and record a new message. So I can record a new message or pull a, a video that I've already recorded. It's on my camera roll. I'm going to click on this. And you know what? Why don't we send a message back to my production team uh, back at headquarters for all the great work they've done. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Uh, live shot from Dreamforce. Tony, Walter on stage. Hey, everybody, doing, Say hi. <laughs> Oh, you could do better than that, for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm just going to call it test because it's quicker to put. That right? sounds like sleep force. So you? I'm going to go ahead and hit publish. <laughs> it's going to go ahead and compress. And you'll see that the menu item just changed. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the, um, the website right now. And we're going to refresh. And you'll see that the message now below is going to include that video. So go ahead and click on that, Amy. Hey, everybody. Uh, live shot from Dreamforce. Tony, Walter on stage. Everybody, say hi. Hi. <laughs> see? See how bad that was? And now we're going to go back over to the mobile. And I'm going to go ahead and log into Salesforce One. And you see, once I log into Salesforce One, I'm going to go ahead and click on the message now. And there's my test. Hey, everybody. Uh, live shot from Dreamforce. Tony, Walter on stage. Everybody? We're going to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> he saved you. So that's message now. We, we put the, uh, the capabilities in the hands of individuals that um, could publish messages to their team. And we found it to be very interesting in that um, some of our customers are using this to not only share what was said uh, to help maybe close a deal, but how it was said. Right? The ability to get in front of everybody immediately. So listen, we closed this big deal. This is, the, uh, this is the approach we took. But more importantly, this is how we applied the message. We emphasize these points, and this is how you deliver an effective sales message. So it's been overwhelming. We have a number of different products we're working on. We're really excited, and it's just great to work with you know, all the Salesforce customers as well as Salesforce. So um, lots of great opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. Important part, important part of that is being able to do things in real time. Right? You, know, you, you have an insight, you've just closed a deal, there's something you want to communicate, bam, and it goes right to the platform. And literally, uh, we just did one of these, he did one on the plane and you know, downloaded it from the plane straight to, to the team. So he was able to give you know, real-time updates. I think that's the part that's really exciting to us. And uh, what we're doing for uh, this show is the first 10 people that could find the man in the blue shirt and the jacket right there, we're going to give him one free trial to message now for the next 60 days. <laughs> 10, you get a running start. Yeah, let him run out the door first. Yeah. So. Um, so that's one of our major initiatives. Uh, one of the other initiatives that we have is we're launching CCI Research, uh, which is going to be a new division of CCI. And the focus here is for us to be able to really understand what's happening in the market, collect information from a variety of data sources, and then publish it back to all of you, sales leaders, so that you can get a sense for trends, how you compare to others, uh, how you can benchmark with things you might want to be working on. And uh, so we're launching that here today. And there will be a survey available online. Anybody that completes the survey, they go to cci.corp.com slash 2015, and we'll make the uh, results available to you. Now, because we are CCI and because we believe in coaching in the cloud, we're going to not just publish results in a static format. How fun would that be? You know, just another report. We're going to video enable all of this information so that rather than getting static PDF files, you're going to get a cloud coach. It's going to walk you through what the data is, what it means, and what it means to you. So look for that, submit the survey, and uh, we'll keep in the loop. That's We're also looking yeah. for any other acquisitions. So if you know That's some right. technology that you think yeah. is extraordinary yeah. that can connect with our platforms, please see us. We're yeah. an acquisition level. Yeah. Uh, that is great stuff. All right. Well, you know, Walter, I, I can't thank you enough. Tony, thank you so much for thank being you. here today. My pleasure. We will see you again at 3.30. 3.30. With Mark. Yes, look forward to it. Looking forward come, come to it. You dare. All right, and I wish you guys continued success. You guys are crushing it, doing some great work. Thank you. Very Congratulations. Much. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Thank you, everyone.